Nelson Mandela once said, I never lose, I either win or learn. He was the much-loved and respected president of South Africa who brought a sense of humility, kindness, and forgiveness not only to South Africa, but the entire world. The entrepreneurs featured on our list today are a true testimony to those words from Mandela. Some lived before him while some were young adults when he died, but together they make up 10 incredibly successful black entrepreneurs. Welcome to Alux.com the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Here they are in no specific order. Number 1. Jay-Z and Beyonce Power couple Beyonce and Jay-Z have a combined fortune of $1.5 billion. There's nothing this couple cannot achieve. Jay-Z was the first hip-hop artist to gross $1 billion, and as he raps on Kanye West's Diamonds of Sierra Leone remix, I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman. He is a business, and he is a man. The accolades and business success this couple have are immense. Fashion, records, music, streaming services, restaurants, alcohol, real estate, cannabis, investing, sports teams, spokespeople for various brands, and even watermelon water. And the brand power of Beyonce and Jay-Z surpasses many, and with brilliant marketing strategies and unique launches, the pair are just going to continue their upward trend. Number 2. Chris Gardner American businessman Chris Gardner is a man that has inspired the lives of many. His life was so meaningful and powerful, a movie called The Pursuit of Happiness was made about him, starring Will Smith. Gardner was homeless in the 1980s while raising his toddler son. The story is lengthy, and Gardner was always a great businessman, even affording himself a Ferrari that he bought from Michael Jordan. After an altercation with his girlfriend, cops were alerted to the scene and they found out he had an unpaid parking ticket on the Ferrari, so he spent 10 days in jail. When he got out of jail, he basically had lost everything. His former girlfriend had left with his child, only to drop him back with Gardner and relinquish all responsibility. Gardner and his little boy were homeless for almost a year. They slept wherever they could find safety, and despite finding a job during this traumatic time, couldn't afford proper housing. Today, if you ask him about the experience, he says, I couldn't tell you that we were homeless. I just knew that we always were having to go. So if anything, I remember us just moving, always moving. He eventually became a reputable stockbroker and founded his own firm, Gardner Rich & Co., and is now worth around $70 million. Number 3. Sheila and Robert Johnson Aluxers, this was no ordinary couple. They were the first African-American man and woman to become billionaires in the USA. In 1979, married couple Robert and Sheila Johnson co-founded BET, Black Entertainment Television. The company sold to Viacom in 2000 for $3 billion. The couple has since divorced, but it hasn't stopped them from moving forward in their respective careers. Sheila Johnson became the owner of a few sports teams, including the Washington Wizards, the Washington Capitals, and the Washington Mystics in the WNBA, of which she's the president and managing partner. Robert became the first African American to become the majority stakeholder of a professional sports organization in 2003, the NBA's Charlotte Bobcats. He also founded RLJ Companies in 2004, an investment firm working in hotel real estate, financial services, asset management, gaming, and the sports and entertainment industry. That same year, Sheila founded Salamander Hotels and Resorts, and she's the CEO. They oversee luxury properties in parts of the USA. She's also the founder and chair of the Middleburg Film Festival and founded a video-on-demand service in 2014 called the Urban Movie Channel. Fast forward two years and she's done it again, co-founding We Capital, a firm dedicated to assisting businesses led by female entrepreneurs intending to focus on social chance. Robert has been in the press lately, having told CNBC the US government should quote, provide $14 trillion in reparations for slavery to help reduce racial inequality. And speaking of slavery, look out for a new video to be released later this month called 15 Examples of Modern Slavery. Number 4. Janice Bryant Howroyd We get our results from where we place our attention. 
True words said by Janice Bryant Howroyd, the founder and CEO of Act One Group, an employment agency and consultancy. She's also the first black woman to run a company that brings in more than $1 billion in annual revenue. It was sheer determination, guts, and a $900 loan from her mom that started her inspiring career off. She opened her business in LA in 1978. She had the $900 from her mom, 600 of her own, a fax machine and a telephone. Part of her reasoning behind opening the business was she had tried for two years to find a job she really wanted but had no luck. Today, her company has over 17,000 clients, operates in 19 countries, and has 2,600 employees. Bryant Howroyd and her family own dozens of properties, including residential and commercial rental spaces. She grew up with 11 siblings, and she was always taught attitude beats aptitude. Number 5. Madam C.J. Walker Her real name is Sarah Breedlove. She was born in Louisiana in 1867 and was the first of her family to be freeborn. Her story is riveting. There is a short series on Netflix called Self Made, which tells it so beautifully, starring Octavia Spencer. On a side note, did you know that Halle Berry was seriously considered for the role of Madam C.J. Walker? We can't envision it either. Like any series, some things are embellished while others are not. What is not untrue is that Walker was the first ever self-made millionaire and holds the Guinness World Record for that achievement. She had assets worth more than $1 million, valuing around $15 million today. A short snippet doesn't do her life and career justice, but this single mom had struggled immensely with scalp problems, causing her to lose her hair. In 1903, she was working for Annie Malone, who had her own line of hair products and was finding great success with her wonderful hair grower. Madam C.J. Walker left her job with Annie and began working on her own line of hair care products that ultimately healed her scalp and encouraged hair growth. She created employment for hundreds of women, opened a factory and college to train her consultants. Both Madam C.J. Walker and Annie Malone made great strides in empowering women of color in the early 1900s. Number 6. Damon John A Luxers, what do the Kardashians and Damon John have in common? Well, John used to work for the Kardashians before he was fired by them. His job was to source and secure product placement in the show, which was not the easiest job because the girls were just starting their careers then and didn't have the pull they have now. He would often pay to have them wear his own brand, FUBU. Long story short, Chloe fired him so he could pursue other avenues, and hence Shark Tank was born. John and Chloe have remained in touch, and she tweeted the following. You always had the respect for me and you always had the ability to see things others couldn't. Now, everyone sees. Keep on shining, only love over here. His accolades stretch far from his clothing line FUBU worth $8 billion. His Shark Tank appearances over eight seasons, Emmy Awards, Critics' Choice Awards. He's the author of several books, including The Power of Broke, which made it to number two on the New York Times bestseller list. Be sure to give it a listen on audible.com. He's also hosting a virtual event on the 24th of October, 2020, called Black Entrepreneurs Day, and will be awarding seven black entrepreneurs with $25,000 each. Number 7. Mo Ibrahim With a net worth of $1.1 billion, 74-year-old Mo Ibrahim is the epitome of success. His focus was telecommunications, and he founded Celtech, which garnered 24 million clients across Africa. He sold the company in 2005 for $3.6 billion and went on to form the Mo Ibrahim Foundation in 2006. The main objective of the Mo Ibrahim Foundation is the critical importance of governance and leadership in Africa. In 2007, he introduced the Mo Ibrahim Prize for Achievement in African Leadership, and the first person to be awarded this honor was the former president Joaquim Chisano of Mozambique. It's through this foundation that the Ibrahim Index of African Governance is published, which ranks the performance of all African countries. They also offer scholarships at the University of Birmingham, SOAS, and London Business School for Master's Students and Postgraduates. We love this quote from Mo Ibrahim. It's one to live by for sure. I think we all need to look at ourselves first. We should practice what we are preaching. Otherwise, we are hypocrites. To meet some more black millionaires, be sure to watch our video, The Top 10 Richest Black Billionaires in the World. Number 8. Mike Adenuga 
we stay in Africa and meet Mike Adenuga, who is the second richest man in Nigeria and the third wealthiest man in Africa. He made his first million by the age of 26 from selling lace and soft drinks. He accumulated his massive fortune of $5.7 billion through telecom and oil production. He received a drilling license in 1990, and a few months later, his consolidated oil struck black gold. It became the first indigenous oil company to achieve this feat and drill in commercial quantities. Con Oil now operates six oil blocks on the Niger Delta. Just to touch on some of his achievements, in 2003, founded Globacom Limited, also called Glow. Glow has over 50 million subscribers and employs 3,500 people. 2012, made the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger. 2018, decorated with the insignia of the Commander of the Legion by honor of the President Emmanuel Macron of France. Hadanuga is a role model for many as he got his MBA at Pace University in New York by working as a taxi driver. Aluxers always consider what he said, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Number 9. Oprah Winfrey this lady needs no introduction, and her success is known around the globe. Her net worth is $2.2 billion, which she has made through many successful businesses. The Oprah Winfrey Show ran for 25 years, and she now owns OWN, the Oprah Winfrey Network. She runs Oprah's book club, publishes a magazine, opened a leadership academy for girls in South Africa, and received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. She's currently talking race and division on Apple TV on The Oprah Conversation in a two-part episode featuring a book written by Isabel Wilkerson called Cast. It's available on Audible, Cast, The Lies That Divide Us, narrated by Robin Miles. Oprah calls the book a must-read for all of humanity. Number 10. Reginald F. Lewis Born in 1942, Reginald F. Lewis was only alive for 50 short years. However, in those five decades, he left an indelible mark in paving the way forward for black entrepreneurs. He was a business pioneer and a well-known philanthropist and gives inspiration to many, especially if you repeat his mantra of keep going no matter what. Lewis was the first African-American to close an overseas billion-dollar bio deal. TLC Beatrice International Holdings, Inc. is a global food company that had 64 companies under it and operated in 31 countries. The company went dormant in the late 80s but was revived in 2007 and trades under its name from the 80s once again, Beatrice Companies, Inc. He was listed as one of the 400 richest Americans in 1993 by Forbes magazine and had a net worth of $400 million before his untimely death from brain cancer. Hey Luxers, we'd love to hear from you on this. Let us know your best business advice you've ever received and how it's helped you out in your business career. Tell us in the comments. And because you're still with us, here's a black entrepreneur that we recently featured on two of our videos, the 10 most successful infomercials of all time and 15 reasons why people buy infomercial products. We can only be speaking about George Foreman. The former boxer turned entrepreneur was the face behind the George Foreman Grill that sold over 100 million units. He was paid $138 million for the rights to use his name. But overall, the grill made him roughly $200 million. So Aluxers, we leave you with the famous words of George Foreman. To be successful in life, you must get into the habit of turning negatives into positives. As always, we love your thumbs up Aluxers, so thank you so much and subscribe to our channel for more videos every day.